Hello everybody, this is Beth Wears, the author, and this is the Witty Writers Show. Merry Christmas, it's Christmas week, and I'm here with the absolutely fantastic Pandora, aka Claire. How are you, Claire? I am great. Thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, I'm, I've been so excited, and, and I said... And, and happy Christmas, look at your lovely bonnet oh, no, and everything. I thought I'd go for something. It's always the other side that I think it's going to be on. Look. <laughs> well, I I wanted to run off and get uh, one of those hats that looks like a big Christmas pudding, and then I thought <laughs> I thought people are going to look at me and think because, of course, it, you know, in the states and stuff, Christmas pudding is like not a big deal, but over here it's huge. And I thought, no, they're not. They're going to say, "What has she got on her head?" <laughs> I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I've got to say, Christmas pudding is something that I do miss terribly yeah. because it yeah. is not in the UK. And oh, you it's are, huge! You're you're in the UK, my home country. I'm in the UK, and you guys are in you guys are in California and other places. But I over here, it's freezing. So yeah, I do yeah, feel I for you, darling. I do feel I for know. you, Claire. Yeah. Before we get started, darling, I am just going to quickly share sure. us with all the groups that everybody can join in, especially as it is Christmas week. Um, I don't know about you, Claire, but I'll be glad when 2020 is over. <laughs> oh, it's been horrendous, hasn't it? It's been crazy. It has been absolutely awful. And I think just yeah. thinks things are improving. Something else. Happened. I know. I know, New right. Thing. We just yeah. can't, can we? We just can't win. There we go. I'm just sharing it to us, uh, Angels. And let me share it to Writers Rock. I have to do a commentary as I'm doing this, Claire, because otherwise I feel sure. like I'm rude. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a pain? Okay, Writers well, Rock. Well, modern technology is amazing. Isn't it, Jack? And, and I mean, it's, it's wonderful. We're all like ourselves. It, it it's fantastic because it just gives us more yeah. reach. Totally. There we, go. totally. We, we are live. Oh, let me just see if I can share it on, uh, on yours as well. Uh, on a friend's timeline. There we go. Let's see if I can do it. I just did it on your, on your profile too. I'm getting quite good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes impress myself. We've got some yeah. people joining us. We've got some people joining us already, Claire. Um, Fantastic. Hi to Kristen. Oh, there, where is she? There we go. Hey, Kristen. Kristen is a fellow author like us. Oh, cool. She says, hey, Beth, and nice to meet you, Pandora. Nice to meet you. Now, I've got to say, you, you're another lady of many hats. And, and yes. it never ceases to impress me how many of us authors um do various other roles as well and oh, um, sure. and and you started at quite a young age with your writing didn't you i did yes i i was at uh, school i i went i was born in london and my parents were um kind of kind of worked in industries which were to do with entertainment and so consequently, they thought, why go for a, a, a run of the mill school? We'll, we'll put the kids in, a, in an experimental school. So I went to an experimental school. Um, and when I was there, we were very much encouraged to go into the arts and try different things. You could go into classrooms. Um, you could get up and walk out of a classroom if you wanted to. You know, you didn't have to stay in that specific classroom. Um, you could try a lot of different things. So I was I was very open to um, any suggestions which teachers came up with. And one of them was, you know, you should do some writing. You should, you know, write, write whatever you want. So that was very encouraging. Um, but then, of course, my family moved. We came down to Devon and I was put in a very traditional, you know, school environment um, and had a few kind of teething issues shall we say because I used to get up and walk out and, and you know wander off and they'd be like you can't do that I sit down, down. <laughs> <Where's he gone? laughs> yeah really 
<laughs> so um, yeah, that was that was a little bit uh, different. But the one thing that um, stuck with me was the writing, which I really loved. Um, and I wrote I wrote crazy stories, you know, um, mostly fantasy, you know, little people living in the woods and all that sort of business. And uh, one of them got sent off, and I got an award for that. So I thought, oh, okay, that's that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, yeah, from a young age, I've uh, been writing. Yeah. I, I, I'm so jealous. Do you know, I would have loved to have gone to a school like that. I don't think I ever would have wanted to leave. Um, <laughs> so yeah, well, it's, it had, it's had its bonuses because, of course, you, there was a, an extraordinary amount of freedom. Um, yeah. But then on the other hand, when you go into society, for example, when I went into a traditional school, um, I didn't know how to spell because I only spoke um, and uh, wrote phonetically. So that was accepted in London at that specific school. But of course, after that, I had to I had to learn how to spell correctly. I had to do times table, you know, which I'd never done before. So, yeah, it was a very steep learning curve. I, I yeah. bet it was. I bet it was a massive adjustment, especially it was not having school or the same type of schooling in common with your peers. I bet that was Correct. a massive hurdle as well. Uh, we've just got a few more people joining us, so I'm going to pop them up so they can say hello. There's Josephine, who's a fellow author. She does fantasy as well, and she says hello from a very wet Devon. So she's in Devon. Yes. <laughs> I wonder whereabouts she is in Devon. Yes, yeah. I, I will let her tell you if she would like to. If um, she would like to. <laughs> if she would like to. Uh, obviously, as women, we have to be a bit careful because I've had a absolutely, absolutely. Mm, well, did. just the fact that just the fact she's in Devon, you know, and she and she can sympathise with how damp and cold it is is all good. <laughs> <laughs> My hometown. I was born there. I absolutely miss Devon completely. Um, my mum has joined us, Claire, from from oh. This is my ah. mum, meet Claire. Claire, meet my mum, Lynn. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Lynn. My biggest <laughs> fan, as it should be. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kristen says, fantasy is so much fun to write. It is. I have to read your work. I would recommend sure. you, Kristen, because Pandora's books are amazing and they have fantastic reviews um josephine says she's just outside of biddeford okay okay so not very far from where i am no yeah. not far yeah. at all not, not very far, far at all I, yeah. I i can see coffee mornings in your future come 2021 well <laughs> with all this with all this crazy thing with covid um and now we've had like 40 40 countries that have turned around to england and well the uk and have said you know, they want us at arm's length. So I'll be lucky to get a cup of coffee, I think, you know. I know, I know it's crazy. Yeah. The tier system and everything, I feel from, for everybody. Oh, who's sure. Who's been affected. Yeah. Um, and yeah. funnily enough, well, it's not funny, really. Um, I Skyped with our family in Portsmouth, and they've gone up to mm. tier four, which is the highest. Oh, so, wow. Oh, no. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's Thank really tough. Skype and technology, as you said. Totally. Um, we've also got Edward, who's just joined us. Hi, Edward. He says, hi, from the greatest city in the world, Las Vegas. I remember Vegas. I went to Vegas three times, I think. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It really, really is. Um, and, yes. and Edward should tell me how, how what it's going to be like for New Year's Eve, because that's what we're planning to take our kids there, to see all the lights. Oh, wow. On New Year's Eve. So you'll have to give us oh, a wonderful heads up. We've also got Sarah. Hi, Sarah. She says, hello, ladies. Hello. Thank you for Hi, joining Sarah. us. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. Now, Claire, how on earth did you go from writing fantasy children's stories, continuing uh -huh. writing into adulthood, and then getting into screenwriting and, right. and, and doing plays. I, I'm, you blow yeah. my mind. Yeah, well, it was, it's interesting. I think, I think the biggest part of it is actually, like so many of us, where we 
have a, a great passion for writing, but we have to pay the gas bill. So you have to work. And when you go to work, there are so many uh, different life experiences that you come across and that imprints on you and it does come out in your writing. So, mm. you know, I think I graduated from those cute little things that live in the woods, etc., to thinking, OK, hold on a minute. And things, you know, took a more realistic turn. So, but I've always loved the, um, you know, the the genre where it's it's speculative fiction for me personally. Uh, so you have extraordinary things happening to everyday people. Um, that was more believable. So yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of how it graduated. It's it's yeah. just amazing, isn't it? We're just going to say a quick hello to Leslie, who's just joined Hi, us. Hi, Leslie. She says hello from El Paso, Texas. Thank you wow. for joining. Leslie is also a fellow author. Um, and it's absolutely Ooh. lovely because we do get um, readers and authors joining us. So it, it's wonderful because it's brilliant. We get, we get you know, readers yeah. introduced to new authors and we also yeah. get so many tips and, and snippets of great information to share with yes. other authors. It's, it's a win-win situation. That's what it's all about, isn't it? That's it what really, it's all really about. Is. Yeah, I was going to ask you because, as you said, a lot of us go from um, one art craft to another. Mm. Yeah. Um, like you, I went through those subtle changes from childhood in, you know, sure, my adulthood. Um, mm. I went from poetry to songwriting, which surprised me, um, and then into writing sci-fi novels. Mm. How did you find the transition going from writing your your stories to screenwriting? Was it a huge learning curve? It was, it was a, a very steep learning curve and it was a real baptism of fire. Um, I have a lady, uh, Lindsay Smith, who is the, or was, excuse me, she was former editor um, for Lucasfilm in Los Angeles, um, and then she covered two other different bases. I think she did Los. I think she did the East Coast, the West Coast, and then she was starting to go into Europe as well. So she she really knew her stuff, and she got a hold of my books and she uh, read them, and she was like, kind of kind of like it was like playing tennis. It was it was nuts because she contacted me and she said, "Love your books, but." you know, as an editor, I would do this, this and this. And I came back like, okay, um, I checked this lady out and she had all the credentials. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like, as a writer to have somebody of that uh, high in the profession give you advice is huge. And yeah. um, it was as much as I could do to kind of, you know, think to myself oh my goodness I hope I don't blow this and she I never hear of her again but uh, we've spent a lot of time together but in the early stages she said to me I'm going to she she had this um, event that she was going to and there were going to be it was all it was all female producers directors writers um, just a, a huge bunch of people out there that have some influence and she said, I'd like you to write a screenplay for, you know, the first book, um, Pilgrim the Balance. And and I I obviously the first thing I said was, I've never written a screenplay. I've got no idea what I'm doing. And yeah. she said, Well then you better learn and <laughs> learn fast. You know, because she's she's from Los Angeles. So she's there's no there's no beating about the bush. Yeah. Um, so I, I said, is there, is there any way that you could help me with this? And she was like, what I'll do, Claire, is I'll send you um, a screenplay and you take a look at it. You see how it's broken down. Um, you don't want any more than 120, uh, 120 minutes, I think, or something, something like that, an hour, an hour and 20 minutes or whatever, or whatever it is. And so she said, it's a minute a page. So, I, of course, when when the phone got put down, I was thinking, 
okay, a minute a page, what does that mean? <laughs> so I, I wrote out a page and then I was reading it and timing myself, you know, to see, okay, uh, it was, it was, I think the, I think by the third um, draft, I'd managed to kind of get my head around how it worked. Yeah. Um, but that was, but that was specifically by looking at the script that she'd sent me. Anyway, I sent it to her and um, she said, and she had these crazy deadlines. I mean, this is a lady that's used to dealing with, major deadlines that are going to cost millions of dollars if it's not done yeah. so she kind of she didn't make any allowances for the fact that i didn't know what the hell i was doing <laughs> so um i sent it to her and she just bounced it right back to me and said do it again and so yeah. we had this back and forth thing for i guess about i guess about a month and then she said okay Okay, that's that's cool. I'll 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 run with that. So wow. that's that was basically it. So it was it was it was a little bit you know scary. I think scary is the right word. Uh, yeah. I think I would have been scared too. I would have been like a deer in headlights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, but um, that's something I've heard of. I actually bumped into um, uh, an author. Oh my gosh, must have been a couple of years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and he was an author turned screenwriter. And that right. was something that he told me was that it was it was really strange having to think of writing with regards to timing, you know, totally. how many totally. minutes did this scene yeah. take? How yeah. many how many minutes will this scene actually take to act? And and I and it blew my mind at the time. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, Lindsay, Lindsay said to me, well, I think on the first and second draft that I sent to her, she said, you're not getting it, Claire. She said, every fifth page, something has to happen. Every yeah. fifth page, I don't care what it is, but something has to happen. You have to look at your book. You have to break it down. You have to pick out those parts that are important, that move the story forward. Yeah. Get rid of anything it's even pared down so much more from your final manuscript that you want for a book it's it's kind of the skeleton of the book if as it were yeah. and then you kind of have to fill it like bits of emotion and things like that into it to kind of flesh it out but um yeah it, it was uh for people that do it as as a profession um they must have this different mindset that they that they live in when they're writing so that it's punchy you know it's lean um and it delivers within a specified amount of time yeah yeah and carries yeah. carries the the story with a with a good right book. exactly yeah. exactly it's crazy yeah. uh, it's crazy some, we got some more comments so i'm gonna put them up here um Kristen says a screen uh, screenwriting too. That's amazing. I agree, Kristen. Honestly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kristen. Marcy's just joined us. Hi, Marcy. She's another fellow Hi, Marcy. author. She's absolutely fantastic. Um, Leslie says she's here for the accents and the great <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I've got I've got my half American, half Devonian, half London accent going on. <laughs> So if nobody, if nobody can understand me, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand you perfectly, and that's all that counts, really. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, Leslie wants to know: Have you always written uh, speculation fiction? Or yes, speculative fiction. Yeah, it's it's always been speculative fiction. Um, the the writing that I'm doing at the moment is moving more into the science fiction area. So with speculative fiction, as as you know, um, it's sort of on the cusp of it could possibly happen. Maybe it could happen. That type of thing, uh, where we are currently with maybe science or technology or with um, physics or spirituality that type of thing but it's moving slightly more into the science fiction area um very much along the lines of say hg wells mm. so a lot like that that's yeah. amazing uh, and i believe you have maybe a copy or two of your book on you uh, 
funny you should mention that. <laughs> Did we see them? And, and here they are. <laughs> okay, so this is this is the first one. There we go. I don't know if it's the light is catching it a bit. It is stunning. Look at that it's eye. Kind of, yeah, because that's that's kind of what it's all about, really. And then amazing. And then this is the second one, Geometry of Fear. Now this cover, um, which you can't really see that well, you can you can kind of see it's an eye, and then it's got red kind of paint on it, that type of thing. Stunning. But the the original. The original one was um, very much along the lines of the first one. And Lindsay said to me about, she said to me, Claire, your books have to be branded. They're not branded. And I was like, branded? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> so she's, she's taught me an awful lot. So the eye that you see on that one was actually put together because at the time um, I had like no money. And I was like, well, not a lot has changed, but I had like absolutely no money. And I thought to myself, who in the family can draw? And I have a, um, a nephew, Connor, who's just received a first degree honors. Um, he's got his degree in fine arts and he actually did the cover. But um, he did say to me, this is this design class should be for a bigger book. And I've never designed for a book before. So that was like the first attempt as it were i i think they're both both beautiful and and i always i'm a great believer that that eyes are the windows to the soul you know sometimes right. you can literally gain so much information from somebody's eyes oh sure when they don't even speak um right and exactly. i think that's very significant I, I think they're absolutely beautiful and i don't know about you claire but it, it might be just me with my sales and marketing head on my shoulders um but whenever i look at a book cover um mm. or poster or, or for you know for a new movie or whatever i always think oh my god that would look so good on a t-shirt <laughs> yes yes totally totally <laughs> and and i i don't know about you but when i when i when i was actually coming up with the names of my books the color mm. schemes the actual design of it mm. everything to do with my book covers i was thinking of how i could market that later on do you find that you're yeah. more aware of that now i'm very very much aware of it um and all of that has come through this learning curve um when i i had a conversation with um a lady at curtis brown and they're one of the big agencies um in london and uh, i was basically trying to get to speak to somebody else at the time um, but she's the gatekeeper so she was like you are so not getting through to speak to this person <laughs> but, I, but I will spend a few minutes on the phone with you so I was asking her about books etc and she was telling me you know it is absolutely critical how your book looks on the shelf because nobody's even going to reach out to pick it up unless it looks good attractive it's it stands out you know it jumps out at you so yeah. it's it's absolutely key um i went to the london book fair at olympia and it's the first time i'd ever been there and um it was extraordinary so if you imagine two football pitches and it's on three levels and on the first level you have all the major publishing houses so you've got random house you've got everybody yeah um, then when you go to the second floor uh you've got all of the agents that are selling to all the different countries and they're speaking in all the different languages so when you walk around you've got flags and signs like China, Japan, Italy, you know, and they're all talking away. And then on the top floor, which you have to be the hoi polloi, as it were, of the book world, is the private area for people that are doing the big deals. Yeah. And, you know, they were taking up they were they were taking up crates of Moe and Bollinger. <laughs> oh, so, nice. obviously, so obviously it's a very hard life. <laughs> I want to go up there. <laughs> I know, seriously, seriously. 
But one of the things you notice when you go there with the branding with these publishing houses is the books that they're at that moment promoting that they're going to be selling, that are going to be hitting the shelves within a couple of months. Their whole, um, uh, it's not a kiosk, it's a, a big, huge area that they have, is all branded in the same colors. Um, the staff are wearing the, 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 the same type of colors as the book covers. Um, there's huge graphics because, of course, 80% of us are visual. We are very influenced by graphics. Yes. Uh, so therefore, you know, it just makes common sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that is one thing when I when I was looking at your books, that was one thing that I did notice was mm. that color schemes are very gender neutral. They, they stand right. out, they pop, they're beautiful book covers. Mm. But they are colors that are very attractive to men and women. And I think right. that is very, very smart because as I, uh, as I know from experience, mm. if you go for more girly colors, um, mm -hmm. but your book is actually, you know, written for men and women, you're gonna mm. miss out on sales because you're not gonna attract those male yeah. readers. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's, yeah, it's like this lady at Curtis Brown said, you know, no, no one's going to no one's going to reach for a book in in a bookstore or in an airport or wherever it might be if they don't initially find something about it, the color, the graphic attractive yeah. um, to them. So it, it has to speak to them without them even reading a word. Yeah. So and that's absolutely key. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think your covers are absolutely beautiful. Um, I think we've got some more comments. Um, so I'm going to put them up here. Um, Sarah says she loves the accents. Thank you, darling. Thank I you, Sarah. It, I, I tell you, I don't know about you, Claire, but it's one of the plus sides of working from home, being a writer, is that you don't get out much. <laughs> right. That is so true. That is yeah. so true. I, yeah. I've lived in America now for 10 years, and I still sound, I think, just as British as I did when I first moved. Well, it here's, here's the funny story. Um, we lived on the West Coast and on the East Coast. We were in the States for about 12 years. And uh, I remember my mother is kind of old school, and I remember I called her up, and I was chatting away to her, and this is a lady who'd gone to boarding school and finishing school and had to take elocution lessons and all this sort of thing and and graduated in deportment, you know, that type of thing. Never took an exam, but, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I, 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 she says, excuse me, dear. She said, but you do know that there is a T in water. Because <laughs> I was saying, yeah, the water's very, uh, it's lovely here, mum. The water's really warm. <laughs> and she was like, Yes, there's a tea in water. <laughs> I'm, laughing. Like, oh. I'm laughing because I have the same conversation with my daughter, Abby. Um, mm. She was seven when we moved, and obviously she's just turned 17 now. Um, yeah. She says water. Right. But, right. But, and <laughs> she completely misses out the teas, and every time she does it, I'm twitching. <laughs> Well, it's it's a really tough it's a really tough one because you know I've got I've got two daughters uh, one of twenty one and um, another that's going to be eighteen and my eighteen year old uh, has a strong American accent. We moved over to New York um, when she was six months old, um, and my eldest daughter has a twang occasionally. But she kind of, she kind of, her American accent's kind of smoothed out a little bit now. But yeah. my younger daughter, of course, when she's at school, all of her friends are like, "Oh, she's American. Don't don't listen to her when she says she was born in Exeter. That's rubbish." <laughs> <laughs> so of course, Dar Darcy, that's my younger daughter. She's like, "Mum, everybody thinks I'm American." And I said, "Well." you kind of are darling in a way you're kind of a a, a mishmash you know you you've got yeah, yeah. all those benefits um i mean they had a wonderful time when they were in the states um and of course olivia every now and again her party piece is the pledge of allegiance so you know and she knows it off by heart because they said it every morning in school 
Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just amazing. Um, yeah. We're going to say hello to a few more people. We've got Joy, who's joined us. Hi, Joy. Thank you for Hi, joining Joy. us. You angel, you. We've also got Edward. He said, do you create your covers? Um, and actually, he said branding so, is important. Yes. Yeah, well, Edward's right. He's he's so right. Um, branding is very, very important. And it's kind of difficult to think about how you're going to brand because at the end of the day, it's a product. But for us writers, it's our baby. It's where we've spent hours and hours pouring out our feelings and emotions, etc., onto paper and putting this whole thing together. And then somebody, well, not somebody, but we've generally got to think about a way to to market it and make it into this product and brand it, etc. cetera. Um, I don't do my own covers. Um, I have Connor that does that for me, my nephew. So he does that. Um, and Did you come up with the, uh, the actual idea though of the eye? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was had a, a quick flip through because he was a student starting out at the time and he was like you know students they're like they're so quick with everything their brain is like whoa so it was like yeah 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 and an eye an eye claire be perfect you know <laughs> so and plus on top of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on top of which because um the main character niece um how how she changes when she has to be uh, when she's forced to defend herself her eyes change so that's where that came from oh yeah. i like that yeah. that's, I love the that first, that's the first sign that things are not going to go well for the person that's you know going to give her a hard time <laughs> <laughs> funny that my my skin goes slightly green when i get annoyed and my kids say, oh, you won't, you won't like her when she's angry. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's your whole compression. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, Leslie's given us a comment. She says her stepmother is from Sheffield. She's oh. lived in the U.S. for 50 years and still wow. is the same. Wow. Sheffield, the Sheffield accent is a very strong one, though, isn't it, Claire? It, it is. It is a very strong accent. Yeah. You know, I, sometimes in different parts of the country, you know, people can. I lived in Scotland for a while, and Pascal, my husband, is French, and he could understand them perfectly. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't know why. I was always trying to figure that one out, and yet <laughs> I was like, "What? What did he say?" So. Yeah, it was it was difficult to understand, especially when people talk very quickly. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think most of yeah. the accents in the northern part of the UK are very tough to understand mm. if you English. Um, and yes. the accents are so strong. You know, the Birmingham accent, the Liverpoolian accent, the Mancunian accent, they're all right. really strong, aren't they? And I think it does yeah. take a lot for them to... It does. So, it really, really does. Um, Joy says, hello. And then Edward says, Edward says, I got lucky mostly because I didn't know what I was doing 11 years ago. After mm. 77 novels, his books are recognized. Wow. I know, right? His books are recognized from the cover worldwide. That is amazing. And there's, your branding. there's your branding right there. You know, that's, that's the smart thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. That blows my mind. Now, tell me, Claire, because, I mean, you, you've got – your books are um, Neath a Pilgrim Chronicle, so they are a series. Yes. Um, you've got two out at the moment, which are getting fantastic yeah. reviews. Yeah. What inspired you to write about Neath in the first place? Did, did you meet somebody who you just thought, oh, my gosh, that person could be – so mysterious and magical and you know blows I think, your mind or yeah i i i think neath basically came out of um a few different things um from myself predominantly um and the reason for that was because i i 
worked for um, an extended period of time with three different billionaires. And I was privy to a lot of the way that they lived, obviously, how they worked, um, how they interacted, how they saw the rest of the world, etc. Um, nice people, very nice people, um, but they have a different way of thinking and a different way of interacting with the world. Um, and there was kind of like the what ifs that I thought about, um, a little bit like H.G. Wells writes. He's, he's very much a what if uh, speculative fiction writer. Yeah. And Neith kind of came from that. And I thought about, OK, well, what if these people decided that actually, you know what, um, things would be so much better if we had a really big decrease in the population and we could reclaim the earth for ourselves and evolve um, at, to such an extent that we were cere cerebrally much higher than anybody else. Um, and we didn't have to deal with everybody else's uh, 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 garbage environmental stuff. Oh, we've lost her for a second. Bear with us, my angels. Bear with us. Hopefully, Claire will come back in a second. I think it's the weather, unfortunately. It's a bit glitchy. Bear with her a minute. Hopefully, she'll come back in a second. Bless her heart. It's uh, the weather just plays havoc, doesn't it? It really, really does. Um, I'm going to put Edward's next comment up. And hopefully, I'm hoping Claire will come back and join us in a second. Um, but Edward wants to know, do you find it difficult to write in the science fiction fantasy world where you make the rules? That is a very, very good question. Oh, she's gone. She will come back. I promise she will come back. Um, while we're waiting for Claire to pop back with us, um, I'm going to have a go at answering your question, Edward, because um, I'm a sci-fi author myself. Um I actually found it quite easy writing science fiction fantasy purely because there were no rules, no limits. Um, you could literally do whatever you wanted. Um, you could go to uh, or introduce a new planet where the earth was green rather than brown and the trees were orange rather than green. Um, so you can literally just let your imagination run completely wild um it was absolutely amazing um i'm hoping claire will come back and join us bless her hopefully she'll be able to click on the link um let me just send her the link again just to make sure she can rejoin so bear with me one second while i do that um there we go let's send her that link again technology honestly sometimes you love it sometimes you hate it don't you <laughs> oh my gosh well I don't know what what oh there we go there she is okay so let's send her that link again uh, there we go clear 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 there we go oh there we go Okay, paste, sent. Okay, hopefully she can rejoin us in a second. Um, we've got some questions here for Claire. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to. I don't want her to miss out on these, so I will wait for her to come back on. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to let you know that we actually have um, three winners from our last interview who shared um the interview for for april which was absolutely fantastic so much appreciated to everyone who shared um so our winners so far um for last week's interview um is joey 
Um, so congratulations, Joey. You are going to win a free copy, paperback copy, from Wanda Roberts of her children's book, which you can either obviously keep for yourself, for, you know, family's children, um, or share it later on. Oh, there we go. Hi, Claire. We've got some more questions for you, but I'm just explaining something right now. Yeah, hold on a minute. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> just bear with me. What happened? Uh, technology, it's probably the weather, so don't worry. Don't yeah. worry. Um, I was just telling our viewers while we were waiting for you to come back on, um, what I do is we, ha um, we pick winners um, for people who share the interviews um, every week. And I was just explaining that we have Joey as our winner for last for our last interview on Thursday. So he wins a free paperback copy of Wanda Roberts' children's book. Um, April, April Baker actually wins a copy of Tin from the author... Uh, Candice Robinson, so congratulations. Yeah, um, congratulations to her. And I've already notified Bernadetta as, as well, who was my winner. So we, we have three different winners, so it was absolutely fantastic. Cool. I know and it's Rob, Christmas. I know it's fantastic. Um, and just to let all our, our all our viewers know at the moment, um, because Claire and I were both saying things are really tough at the moment, especially in the UK where yeah. everything is being shut down and getting worse. Um, what I've done is I've actually made both of my Earth Angels eBooks free to download. Oh, that's now. amazing. And Christmas Day at midnight. So all this week, um, people can download Earth Angels for free. Um, and that's the adult version, the adult edition, and the young adult edition. So that's a little amazing. Bit a little extra Christmas gift from me to all of you. So um, I hope you enjoy, and I, I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks. Um, we have got some more questions for you. Oh, good. So um, Edward wants to know, do you find it difficult to write in the science fiction fantasy world where you make the rules? Um, for science fiction which the books are moving into more yes it is more difficult because you know you're moving so much further away from reality and even from the speculative fiction where you know you're you can sort of willingly suspend your disbelief um so yeah it, i do find that a little bit tough because you've got to you've got to think about things more you know it, you can't um we all have great imaginations as writers, um, that's a given, but you also have to make it plausible on some level. So, yeah, it's a challenge. Now, yeah. with your books, are they are they completely based here on planet Earth? They um, totally are. Not a single Wookiee in sight. No, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> So it's it's all every day, you know, it's, it's everyday life. Um, it's based in the present day and it's just extraordinary things that occur. Um, the main protagonist is a lady called Neith A. Pilgrim and she runs a storage facility and she basically stores the secret possessions of other people. And it's a very lucrative um, business, but obviously, naturally, it's a very dangerous business as well. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's based, it's, it's got those things that uh, take it outside of it, dependent on what they're going to be storing. Sometimes they might store something that is, you know, has some sort of spiritual bent to it or has some mystic bent to it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's gaining yeah. lots of knowledge about all these people and uh, their secrets. Yes, well. exactly. And part of part of their job um, is she has to look into the provenance of it. You know, does this actually belong to this person? You know, so she she does her homework and that takes her on all kinds of, you know, adventures, etc. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, what's the weirdest, while you've been writing your books, what's the weirdest yeah. thing? you've ever had to research or google um i think that i think that would be where um 
I had to write about a papal vial. So it's a, a vial, obviously a small glass um, container, and it was called the papal vial because it was it contained the essence of you know one of the popes. Um, so I had to think to myself, okay, is that actually rubbish, or it, could that possibly happen? You know, because people reading the books, it's speculative fiction, so you have to you can't take it so far away from that realm because then it becomes something else. So I did a lot of research on that. And I was looking into the Pope and I was looking into the Vatican and I was looking into all kinds of different things, you know, that to do with it. And there's so many people out there that write about various um, things to do with um, the Vatican that are based on half truths. So there's an awful lot of stuff floating around out there. But um, yeah, that that's that was one of the things that was bizarre for me because I suddenly realized there's a whole um, not an industry, but there's a whole interest out there from people from all over the world that um, look at that specific place and that specific organization, the church, etc., cetera, um, and want to know more about it. And yeah. I suppose when things come up, they like, well, OK, maybe that could happen or this could happen, you know. So, yeah, I, I must admit one thing I I've, that's always fascinated me with regards to the Vatican and everything. And I was lucky, lucky enough to visit last year. Um, absolutely amazing. I mean, I bet beautiful, beautiful place. Um, yeah. I would love to have gone into the their secret library, which I'm right. sure probably heard about right um, right you know because there's so much knowledge in there well, when you when you think when you think beth that they they've been collecting information for centuries yes and and have had the the financial resources and the manpower etc to be to be able to go anywhere on the globe effectively and gather whatever they wanted you yeah. know that they that they felt would be of interest to them yeah um, there's a there's a uh, a whole website that um is all about the art that they have you know sculpture paintings oh, all this incredible artwork yeah. so it, it's a it's a fascinating it must be an absolutely fascinating and absorbing place to visit oh uh, absolutely absolutely yeah and it's quite reassuring that such a big religious um organization is, mm -hmm. is protecting so much history and preserving it sure and, and, and and taking it through our you know each generation it's absolutely just mind-blowing um we've also got some more comments here um so i'm going to pop this one up so joy would like to know <laughs> how did you get to work with the billionaires love to explore thinking differently well um i when i i i moved to brussels i lived in brussels for a while and when i came back from brussels i thought to myself well i've, I've really got to do something you know uh, that pays the bills and so I decided to become a chef and I trained for four years I took all my qualifications I um, qualified and I became a chef and when you become a professional chef in a professional kitchen I worked I worked at the Stackers Dunblane Hydro in uh, Scotland there were 27 chefs all male I was the only female and you it suddenly hits you one day do you really want to be stood up for almost 12 hours a day being shouted at yeah <laughs> so, it's not an easy job <laughs> I, I, it is so not an easy job and i was very good at my job and i finally wound up i had five guys underneath me and you know i was i had a, i gained a little bit of respect it was amazing but uh, I thought, no, I think I'll go into management, actually. The management, I saw them walking around in suits. They weren't sweaty. People weren't <laughs> shouting at them. And I thought, yeah, that's for me. Their hair wasn't stuck to their faces. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Yeah. So uh, I went into management and I took a business degree um, 
uh, and administration management, whatever it was. And then I thought to myself, okay, um, I think I'm ready to kind of like go out there and have a look at it and see what I think. And both Pascal and I, Pascal's qualified up the yin yang with all, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we went over to the States and at the time, this is how far back it was, guys. It was Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. So we, yeah, I know, happy days. <laughs> so obviously, you know, it, it was pretty lax. It was pretty relaxed over there. And um, we we thought, okay, well, we don't have a green card. We've got a visa, but we we don't have a green card. So we can't work. So how's this, How what are we going to do? Because our our money was coming to an end and we loved America and we just didn't want to go. And so we got a hold of this attorney and she started processing the paperwork and she said, you know what, guys, you need to have some money behind you. You need to be working for somebody that can um, help you run these papers through, it, et cetera. Yeah. So that's how we first got involved in that. We went to work privately and we there was an advert in the LA Times and it said international agency and we contacted this lady called Dora, Dora Renet, and she was on Beverly Hills Drive and we went up there and she, if you've imagined The Incredibles, okay, you know the movie The Incredibles? Yeah, yeah. Now in there they have like this lady who is a stylist, a little tiny, little tiny lady with little black hair and the glasses and Okay, Dora was exactly like that, exactly like that. And uh, she said, and she had all these pictures on the walls of these movie stars and all these people that she was getting staff for. And of course she had an English, um, an English uh, lady and a French guy and she was like, okay, I'm sure we can do something with you. So that's how we got in with the first person um, and then after that, uh, we were contacted by another person who was kind of working for the other. I've we've signed a lot of um, uh, confidentiality stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, hard. I've signed I've signed so many. I'm like, but, <laughs> so this, yeah. So this was actually for you and Pascal cooking for them. No, no, no. This was actually running the estate. So, oh, we had to, right, so we okay. had to run the estate. So we would we manage it. Everything. Okay. Totally. They had staff. We would manage the staff in the estate. And you have to imagine that these people have multiple properties and they have them on a global level. Yes. So you, yeah. you're having to, you know, you're having to jump on and off planes and go to these different places and make sure everybody's doing what they're meant to be doing and all that kind of business. Yeah. I, I bet you, as a writer and such a creative person, I bet you were just filled with so much inspiration from things that you saw, yeah. people, as you said, interacted with each other. Um, I mean, totally. what, a, what a wealth of experience to... Well, it was something, it's something that I had absolutely no experience prior to that. I mean, I worked in some very nice hotels um so you get you get a sense of it but you're always on the other side you're always yeah. you know, below stairs if you know what i mean um but when you are because these people have a very small circle of staff that are directly around them they yeah. don't have a huge amount of people around them they don't like um a huge amount of people they have a small group of people that are around them that they trust and that and that's it yeah um so you get to know them a lot and you get to experience a lot of what they're experiencing because you have to because you you're working alongside them um but yeah it's uh there was a there was a huge amount that i would never have got a chance an opportunity to have seen or experienced beforehand some of it good some of it not so good you know but uh yeah a, a, a very um enriching experience mm. i guess yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, we are running out of time, unfortunately. Darn it. I could <laughs> just talk to you all day. Can we just have another look at your books, Claire? Because they're absolutely Yeah, absolutely. Stunning. Absolutely. Um, so 
This is called, that's it. Oh, look at that. That's the first one. They're just that's the balance. And it does jump out. And if you, if you go to the website, um, you will actually see more of the graphics. Yes. So there's more of the graphics on the website and you'll get a, a better feel for it. And you'll yeah. also see the other two book covers that are on there because the third book is nearing completion. So 2021. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I get so excited. I, 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 I swear I get so excited about my books that I can't stand it. And I have to pat my pat my legs. <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. It's like nervous excitement, isn't it? Because yeah. you're excited yeah. to put it out there, yeah. but then yeah. you're really nervous because everyone's going to judge you. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of I kind of look forward to because because I've had Lindsay and Lindsay was you know so um, not judgmental, but she was so much on the money and she was so much you know uh, talking to me about how things should be. Um, I, I took a lot of, I developed a really thick skin because yeah. of the way she was. She, I would write something. She was like, no, do it again. You know, so yeah, yeah, that really, think, really helped. I think we all need somebody like that uh, uh, as writers. We always need some, at least one or two people who will be brutally honest, tight, right. truth, not blow yes. stuff up your butt. Um, yes. Because it makes us, you know, better as yeah. writers. It hones yeah. our craft, doesn't it? Um, it and, totally and, does. And you're lucky because, you know, obviously you've had that support. I was so industry. lucky. I was really, really lucky. Yeah. And really plus, lucky. plus, Pascal is is all over your books and, and pushing you out there. I think he's absolutely amazing. You, you're like a power couple. I think it's yeah. absolutely Fantastic. Sweet. It's only been 35 years. He's probably thought to himself, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, I could have got less for murder. <laughs> yeah, really. The train robbers got less. <laughs> uh, Claire, it's been an absolute joy. It's been please, a major blast. Please keep up with the comments because we have got I questions will. and comments that I haven't, I, to, I haven't been able to get to, unfortunately. Um, well, I wanted to thank you so much, you know, for inviting me because I was just, I was just so excited about the whole prospect. You oh, know, I, was like, oh, I can't wait! I can't wait. So, me, yeah. me too. So, uh, please come back when when your new book is out next year. I shall, because yes. I would love to. I would love to show it to everybody and help you brag. Oh, thank about you. It. Um, the cover thank looks you. awesome. Um, I will share your links as well. Your website link is already attached to the video, but I will add. Cool. All your other links as well and for my viewers merry christmas don't forget to download earth angels um, my little gift for you completely free adult and young adult editions um and if you do download them um make sure you leave an amazon review because i will be doing giveaways later on and your review will be your entry um so make sure you do that um merry christmas to everybody um, unfortunately, I think Claire is frozen. Honours, bless her. Um, but thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining in and asking questions. And we will see you again after Christmas. Um, thank you very much and uh, happy holidays to you all.